Hello, uh, I'll introduce myself. Uh, my name is John Ross. I've lived in this area all my life and for a number of years I was also on the board of the Northern Lighthouse Board. So I'm delighted to be involved in this bit of work that we're doing today. Uh, I've with me uh, Callum Curry. Uh, Callum's been instrumental in really making big improvements to the harbour. He's also chairman of the Harbour Trust, uh, Har the Harbour Trust Society. Uh, and we're looking at this old lighthouse, which hasn't worked for many, many years, but I'm going to pass over to Callum to introduce himself and tell us a bit about not just this lighthouse, but also one that used to be at the end of the pier. Callum. Okay, thanks, John. Hi, I'm uh, Callum Curry. I'm the chairperson of the Port Patrick Harbour Community Benefit Society. Um, as John says, we've got the, the current Port Patrick Lighthouse standing behind us here. Uh, built in the sort of late 1800s, uh, just before the turn of the century. Um, this lighthouse actually didn't really work for very long at all uh, before it was uh, superseded by uh, Killentringham Lighthouse, which was built and commissioned just a few years later. But previous to this lighthouse, there was a bit more interesting lighthouse out in the end of the old pier, which was uh, built by uh, John Rennie uh, back in the early 1800s. Uh, around about the 1830s it was finished and that lighthouse unfortunately succumbed with the, the pier to the north channel and the weather and today that lighthouse now stands in Colombo Harbour, Sri Lanka where it was disassembled in Port Patrick uh, when the pier was undermined in a storm in the late uh, 1830s and taken brick by brick to Sri Lanka and re-erected in Colombo Harbour. So Callum, we're standing on what remains of what were two piers here in this village of Port Patrick. Um, and of course you can point out, if we go further out, uh, that's where the, uh, the other lighthouse was before it was transported. But I think it would be interesting if you could give us some background about why these piers were built, uh, what happened to them and the importance of Port Patrick as a port which was close to Ireland. Yep. Um, well, Port Patrick was a very important harbour to uh, the trade between Ireland and uh, Scotland and indeed the whole of the UK uh, back in the, the early 1800s. Uh, it goes even further back than that. However, um, there was uh, two piers built here at Port Patrick in the early 1800s. Uh, it was uh, Rennie Pierce. The uh, harbour was uh, being designated to go from um, sailing vessels, uh, then along came the, the steam uh, vessels, the paddle steamers. Um, both the North and South Harbour were commissioned. The South Pier was built. Uh, the lighthouse was completed on top of it. That was in approximately the mid-1830s. Uh, However, a large storm came along around about the end of the 1830s and undermined the pier and they couldn't fix it. So at that point they hadn't completed the North Pier, so they abandoned the North Pier and decided they were going to abandon the South Pier as well. And at that point, that's when they decided they would uh, take the, the brand new lighthouse away stone by stone. And as they did back in those days with the colonies, the lighthouse ended up in uh, Colombo Harbour in Sri Lanka, as they know it today. I think it's uh, interesting to remember that one of the reasons that the port was built, the harbours were built here and also across at Donaghadi was that this was indeed a military port. The, the British government uh, always wanted to have the ability to ship personnel, military personnel and goods back and forward between uh, the UK and, uh, and Ireland and this was the shortest crossing because as we look across, we're only 19 miles from Donaghadi. So it was an important military port as well as for goods. And it's interesting that there are two 
streets in Port Partick to this day. One's called Colonel Street and the other one is called Barrack Street, which indicates that this was indeed an, an important military port. And one of the interesting things, because I have a farming background, is that at one time a lot of cattle were brought over from Ireland and landed here in Port Partick. Uh, to my left here you can see just the remains of the original pier from the 1700s. That pier actually went out and formed what was the original South Harbour at Port Patrick. Port Patrick being uh, made up of a South Basin, a North Basin and later on in the mid 1800s became the inner dock that you can see behind me there. So here we are on the remains of the North Pier. You can see behind me just the remnants of it stretching out the water. Uh, to the other side there, down at the south, you can see the South Pier and what's left of it. But the interesting thing here with the piers was that uh, they weren't built using mortar back in those days. They were actually used in a dry mechanical build. And in front of us here you can see the sandstone with the whinstone dowel inside it, which was used to mechanically lock the stones together. Unfortunately, it didn't uh, bear so well with the, the ferocious uh, North Channel, hence both piers lie in ruins. So here we are, we're uh, standing on the north side of the, the harbour. Uh, we're looking across and the, the lifeboat is uh, tied up in, in the harbour and that's been an important feature of uh, Port Partick Village for many years. And of course the harbour has changed very much over the years but uh, we're standing beside what's now the tennis courts and behind us we have the bowling green. Uh, and uh, I'm going to pass over to Callum because he's got a, 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 some really interesting history about what this used to be prior to it being made into a leisure facility. So Callum, tell us about the, the railway and the station here. Yeah, so uh, yeah, behind us here you can see the tennis courts and bowling green. Uh, Port Patrick uh, had uh, two uh, railway stations uh, back in the day. It had the main station which was up above the top of the village at the top there and then it also had the harbour station where, behind where we stand now. So the harbour station was primarily used for when they brought cattle in and um, there was the rail link obviously then with the, the vessels that came in whether they be sailing vessels earlier on or later on yeah, there was the, the steam uh, vessels, the paddle steamers. So they, there was a ramp here which uh, they could bring the cattle up and load the cattle onto the, the troll, uh, trucks behind us and uh, passengers also were a big feature. Um, in latter years, uh, after the harbour finished working with the paddle steamers, there was a lot of tourism in Port Patrick and they used to run trains all the way from Glasgow uh, down specifically to Port Patrick, bringing hundreds of uh, holiday makers, visitors, whether it be for the day or for the weekend. Uh, an interesting feature we can look at from where we're at next to harbour, uh, the modern building in, uh, uh, in front of us uh, was uh, a replacement of, for the school that was built about 40 years ago and that school is actually built absolutely on top of what was the original railway line and included in the building for historical purposes there's a small length of railway line that reminds the, the, the pupils of the school, exactly what that piece of land was used for and was an important historical piece. And a, a sad position was that on one occasion, a train from Glasgow, uh, unfortunately, a young lady uh, got caught in below the, the train and that also commemorates that sad event that happened exactly where the school is situated. <laughs>